Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1530. Hey, we're still talking about dynamic arrays. And in this video, we want to see how to create an accounting schedule of accounts. Now, you're not going to believe the list of functions and features we're going to see in this video. Some of them will be the new array functions only in Office 365, like sort and unique. And others will be functions we've used for years, like count ifs and if. Here's what we want to do. If I select the expense group sales, instantly have my schedule of accounts with individual amounts and a total appear below. If I change it to power and fuel, instantly I want everything to update. If we go over to our sheet 1503, this is where we're going to build our template. Here's our trial balance. Now, this actually came from a question from someone in India, and they said, this list may change. So we're going to assume that the maximum distance for this table will be from row 4 to 31. Now, actually, in this video, we'll see how to create a solution using the new dynamic array features. Two videos ahead, we'll see how to do this with Power Query and Pivot Tables. And that solution will be much easier than this solution. But anytime we're trying to create a solution, if I want, when I change a formula input, the solution to change instantly, that's a job for formulas. When we see how to do it two videos ahead with Power Query and Pivot Tables, it will not be hard. We'll just have to add an extra step when we change something. We'll have to refresh the whole process. All right, let's go over to 1530 and see how to do this with formulas. Now, the first thing I'd like is a unique list from the trial balance sheet of these accounts. So we're going to use sort. That's a new array function. Unique. That's another new array function. I'm going to highlight, including all the way down, all these empty cells here. I see up in the formula bar, close parentheses, close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, I get a sorted, unique list. Now I want to get rid of the 0. So up at the top, that cell right there, we can see the formula. Down below, they're grayed out because that's part of the spilled array. Later in this video, we'll see that we can format and do things to these, even though there's not actually a formula in that cell. We want to come up here. And for that range, we want to filter out any zeros. So that's the array and filter. Control C. Now I'm going to come to the end, comma. I want to include. Control V, and we want to include only the rows that are not equal to 0. Not is less than, greater than. That filter is sitting inside of unique. We'll get a unique list of the cells that actually have data, and then unique and sort will deliver our list. Now I want to come over here, and I want to create data validation. Data validation. There's our list, and our source is going to be our unique dynamic list. But there's a problem. It puts the range in, and I don't want that. I do not want the cell. So watch this. I'm going to backspace. G3, that's where the formula lives. If I use a pound symbol, that's the syntax that says, hey, that spilled array, always get everything that it spills. Click OK. So now I have rentals. Now, I created this formula here already. I just put some text in double quotes, used the join symbol, and joined it to there. Now we need the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or however many, depending on what we select up here. So we're going to see the sequence function. Now, for rows, if I were to put 3 here, sequence just gives me 1 to 3. But I want one to however many expense groups there are. So right here, I'm going to use count ifs. Go over and get the criteria range. Now I can see I'm up in the formula bar, comma. I don't remember what cell it is, so watch this. I'm going to type A1, close parentheses, and Enter. Now I need to edit that. A1 is not right. I select A1 and click on C2. Now I have my 1, 2, 3. 
So all we had to do was put some number there, and it gives us 1, 2, 3, 4, however many count ifs deliver. Of course, if I change this to power and fuel, now I get 1 to 4. Now the account names, that's our condition or criteria. If we go over to TB, I want the actual account names from this column, but only when there's a power and fuel expense in this column. That's the perfect job for the filter function. On the TB sheet, these are the accounts I'd like to filter. I see up in the formula bar, comma. And I'm going to say, hey, please filter. Still looking up at the formula bar. Anytime you are equal to cell D4, close parentheses. Now when I hit Enter, it was actually, look at that, totally off. I'll use my Move cursor. And now filter will deliver whatever the correct accounts are. Now we're going to use the sum ifs function. Well, the first part of it is just a normal sum ifs. So I'm going to go over to TB. I need to add from this column here. I see up in the formula bar, comma. And I'm going to highlight this column right here. And I'm going to do the same thing, comma, A1, close parentheses. That's a single condition or criteria that tells sum ifs which ones to add. And if I highlight this spilled array, notice I highlighted it and it actually put it in. B5 pound. Please give me the spilled array. And so now this is a spilled array also. Now, we do need a total at the bottom. And we're going to have to get tricky here. And I'm going to get tricky off to the side. And then whatever we get working here, we're actually going to need, in this case, five rows. Then once we get it working, we'll put it into our formula. And it will append the total to the bottom. I'm going to use the sequence function. And I'm going to count how many rows are in this spilled array right here. Close parentheses. If I hit Enter, it gives me 1 to 4, F2. But inside, after the rows functions, I'm going to add 1. And we notice now we have 1 to 5, F2. Now, I would like to create an array of falses and trues, or trues and falses. Because what I need in this formula is for each one of these rows, I want to fit these four values. But then we'll have a separate calculation for the total. And I want that in the fifth row. So I'm going to use the if function. So I need falses and a true. The if function will put the total calculation in true, and then this spilled array into the falses. So I'm going to ask a question of that array 1 to 5. How many of you are greater than the rows calculation? And now when I hit Enter, now I get my array of trues and falses. I can put that inside of if now. There's the logical test. For the true, I'm going to do some ifs. And we're going to go over to that sheet, and I'm going to remember C2 this time. So the sum range, that's this range right here. I see up in the formula bar, comma. And I'm going to highlight the expense group. Come up here, comma, C2. Close parentheses, close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, now I have just the total at the bottom. And watch this. I'm going to highlight all of this except for the last parentheses, Control-C, Escape. Now, right after the equal sign, Control-V. And very carefully, I see right here, I'm going to type a comma. Because now, the sum ifs looking at the spilled array is exactly where I want it, in values if false. Now I close parentheses and Enter. Now let's test this. If I come up here and change it to sales, that is amazing. Now I don't need this. Now I'm, I have determined I put this black line here just so I don't forget. I'm never going to get anything past there. I'm going to highlight this range because for the spilled arrays, I'm going to add some formatting to all the cells. Control-1. We'll use accounting with no symbol. Click OK. The only last trick here is what in the world are we going to do? Because right now I need two borders right there. But when I change it to power and fuel, I want the borders down there. Well, I'm going to build a logical test off to the side and use it in conditional formatting. And think about where I want the borders. Well, there's something in the cell, and the something's a number. And below is empty. 
So when both conditions are true, that's when I want the borders. So I'm going to say is number relative cell reference, close parentheses, and at the same time is blank the one below. Now I close parentheses, close parentheses, control enter, and copy it down. So there it is. I get a true. So because I'm going to use conditional formatting, I'm going to highlight all of that. The active cell at the top, control C, escape. And very carefully, I'm going to highlight it this direction, not this direction, because the active cell is there. I need to highlight it for conditional formatting, active cell, where I copied the formula from exactly the same, home. Conditional formatting, new rule, or Alt-HLN. I'm going to click on Use Formula to determine which cells to format, or hit Page Down. I'm going to click in Format Values where this formula is true, or hit Tab. Control-V and Format. Border. I'm going to click two lines. I'm even going to go over to Number and get fancy here. I'm going to say Accounting with a dollar sign. Click OK. Click OK. Now I can delete this, and I think I have. I could insert some rows, because I probably don't want to see that. Right click Insert. Legal and professional. That is absolutely spectacular. All right, we saw a lot of different things in this video. Sort unique and filter. We saw data validation. We saw the great sequence, the old standby count ifs. We saw filter. And then we created this cool dynamic array formula to give us the individual amounts and the overall totals. And then finally, we did conditional formatting. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including next video will be dynamic arrays. And then we'll do a similar example here, but with a much easier Power Query and Pivot Tables. All right, we'll see you next video.